Imagine, uh, you know, your elderly parent, maybe it's late at night, and oh no, a pipe just burst. They're stressed, obviously, and the last thing they need is some, well, dodgy, I think that's the word, tradey, trying to take advantage, right? Absolutely. That's exactly what we're diving into today. Seems a lot of you requested this, protecting loved ones from those, uh, those pesky trade scams. Yeah, it's a big one. And sadly, getting bigger all the time. And the research you sent in, wow. Let's just say I learned a lot, and uh, some of it's pretty alarming. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not exactly a rare occurrence these days. Not rare at all. So we're going to arm you with, you know, the knowledge, the tools to spot those uh, red flags, basically mm -hmm. build a fortress around your family. Love that. A fortress of information. Because oh, uh -huh. knowledge is power, right? Exactly. And one article highlighted a trend that, frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Seems there's this surge in scams, but it's not just any scams. It's those essential, like, after-hours services. Right, when you're most vulnerable. Exactly, when you need them most. We're talking uh, electricity, plumbing, locksmiths, you name it. Those moments when, let's be honest, you're desperate, you're not thinking straight. It's like they say pressure creates diamonds, but uh, it can also crack those pipes, you know, leaving you vulnerable. Oh, I like that. And this isn't happening in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Factors like, well, we all know the rising cost of living. Unfortunately, it creates this environment where, well, exploitation thrives. It's a sad reminder that tough times, they bring out the worst in some people. It makes you almost, I don't know, want to be a hermit and never call a tradesperson again. Ha uh ha, -huh, I hear you. You laugh, but that feeling, right? That vulnerability, that's their bread and butter. Yeah. And it's not even just the financial hit. It's its the emotional toll it takes. Oh, absolutely. To feel unsafe in your own home. Exactly. The fear of will they come back, the shattered mm -hmm. trust, it's devastating. It really is. This article, it has a section very aptly titled, I might add, Identifying the Signs of a Dodgy Trades Company. <laughs> dodgy, that's the perfect word, isn't it? Oh, it's spot on. It, you know, it's often those subtle signs that we miss, especially when we're, you know, in a rush. Like, have you ever noticed multiple business names? Oh, like a, a criminal with aliases, but for plumbing. Precisely. Yep. A legitimate business owner. Yeah. They're proud of what they've built. Mm. They're not hiding behind a bunch of different names. Makes sense. Now, what about those online reviews? Because we all check right. those. Right? All the time. But here's the thing. Don't just get, you know, hypnotized by the star rating. Oh, so true. Five stars doesn't mean they're not a nightmare to deal with. Exactly. Look at those balanced, specific reviews. Yeah. Because even the best businesses, they have an off day now and then. How do they respond to negative feedback? That tells you everything. That's a really good point. Are they defensive or are they genuinely trying to resolve the issue? That speaks volumes more than a perfect score ever could. Oh, I never thought about it like that, but it makes so much sense. Right. Now, this one seems obvious, but uh, a lack of a physical address, that's got to be a red flag, right? Oh, huge. I mean, a tradesperson without a shop, it's like, I don't know, a chef without a kitchen. Ha <laughs> ha. Love that analogy. This doesn't add up. It really doesn't. And finally, let's talk about those high pressure tactics because we've all experienced that, I'm sure. Yep. The limited time offers, the, uh, you know, aggressive sales pitches. Right. That urgency, that feeling of you got to act need W. <laughs> it's designed to, well, to bypass your common sense. Oh, it totally works on me. I'm like, oh no, the sale ends tomorrow. Sign me up. See, and that's what they're banking on. Remember, legitimate tradespeople. They're confident in the value they provide. They don't need to pressure you. A true professional will give you time to think, to get other quotes if you want. Yeah, to not feel rushed into a decision. Exactly. If someone's pushing you to sign on the dotted line right now, right this second, that's a huge E red flag. They're trying to to short circuit your common sense. It's like they know you're more likely to say yes when you're feeling, I don't know, stressed and flustered. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, defense, spotting those those dodgy tradies, but what about going on the offensive? How do we find the good ones? The ones we actually want our loved ones to call? That's the real peace of mind comes in. Mm -hmm. Having that, that trusted network of professionals. So a late night emergency goes from, oh no, what do I do, to Okay, who's on my list? Right, like having a superhero team, but for, you know, burst pipes and faulty wiring. Exactly. Your very own A-team of trustworthy tradies. Love it. But how do we assemble this dream team? Thankfully, the research you sent, it gives us a pretty good roadmap. Oh, it's out there for sure. And first up, licenses and insurance should be a given, shouldn't it? Absolutely non-negotiable. I mean, it's not rude to ask. It's protecting yourself. Yeah. Any reputable tradesperson, they'll be happy to provide that information. It shows they're legitimate. 
and that peace of mind, priceless. Totally agree. And speaking of peace of mind, online reviews, we talked about them, but doing it the smart way, not just like, I'll admit I'm guilty of this, just glancing at the stars. Right, you gotta go deeper. Deeper, okay, so what are we looking for? What are people actually saying in those reviews? Do the positive ones, do they sound genuine or are they kind of vague and generic? Mm. Even more telling, how does the business handle those negative reviews? Oh, interesting. Yeah, because everyone loves a five-star review, but it's how you deal with the not-so-great ones. Exactly. Anyone can look good when everything's smooth sailing. It's how business handles those bumps in the road that reveals their true character. So true. This next one really resonated with me, uh, personal recommendations. The source talked about the power of a trusted network. And, you know, especially for older relatives who might not be as online, word of mouth is huge. Absolutely. There's something about hearing. I used this electrician last year. They were fantastic. From someone you trust, it cuts through the noise. Like a stamp of approval from someone you actually know. Precisely. It's that extra layer of confidence. And building this list before yeah. you need it, that's key. When you're not mm -hmm. stressed, not panicking, you make better decisions. Oh, 100%. Preparation is key. Now, this next part, I'll be honest, surprised me a little. Empowering seniors with basic home management skills. I love this approach because it's not about turning them into, you know, DIY gurus overnight. Right. They don't need to be rewiring the house. Exactly. But giving them that knowledge, the confidence to maybe handle some minor issues, it reduces their reliance on those, well, potentially dodgy after hours calls. And the example they used, so simple but brilliant, knowing how to shut off the main water valve. Right. A burst pipe nightmare for anyone. But imagine being elderly, panicked and not even knowing where to start, being able to shut that water off quickly. Huge difference. You know what, I'll admit, I learned something there. I don't think I actually knew where mine was until reading that. See, you're already one step ahead. Ha <laughs> ha, right. It's those little things that can make all the difference. Totally. Uh, the article also mentioned some other areas, basic electrical awareness, like knowing what a trip circuit breaker looks like, power board safety. Again, not fixing it themselves, but having that awareness. Absolutely. Imagine your mom calls, she's worried because the light switch feels warm. Mm -hmm. Now she knows that's not normal. That's a potential fire hazard. It empowers her to call an electrician. Such a good point. It's about giving them the knowledge to identify when something's wrong, even if they can't fix it themselves. Exactly. And think about the conversations it opens up. Instead of calling for help at the first sign of trouble, they can call you, a friend, and say, hey, my power board trip, what should I do? It becomes collaborative. I love that. Independence, but with a safety net. Exactly. Speaking of safety nets, let's talk about the last, but certainly not least, essential element, the emergency plan. Because let's face it, even with the best preventative measures, sometimes life, well, life happens. It sure does. And sometimes it throws a whole toolbox, not just a wrench. So how do we help our loved ones prepare for those moments, those, ugh, I wasn't expecting that situations? Planning. Having a plan in place before you need it. That's key. And the research you found, it actually outlines a really, really solid approach. Music to my ears. Okay, let's break it down. First step in creating this emergency plan, what is it? Where do we even start? Contact list. But, and this is important, we're not just talking about, you know, 911 on speed dial. Right. Got to go deeper than that. This is where that A-team comes in. Those trusted tradespeople, reliable neighbors, family members who can be there, like pronto. Right. That inner circle, the cavalry you can call on. Exactly. Building a network. So no matter what the situation, there's someone to call. It gives not just the senior peace of mind, but, you know, the family as well. Everyone breathes a little easier. Oh, absolutely. Knowing there's backup, even when you can't be there personally, that's huge. Okay, so contact list, check. What else goes into this master plan? Check-in system. Sounds simple, but it's powerful. Regular calls, video chats, whatever works. But here's the thing. You're not just saying, hey, how's the weather? You're really observing. Right? Exactly. Maybe they mention things being a bit more difficult or, you know, you're on a video call and you notice something in the background. It just seems off. Those little things we might normally miss can be a sign of a bigger problem brewing. And early intervention, whether it's a scam or something else, it's everything. Makes a ton of sense. Okay, so we have the emergency plan itself all written out, but uh, let's be real. If it's tucked away in a drawer somewhere. Useless, right. Might as well not even exist. Exactly. It needs to be accessible. You know what this research suggested? The fridge. The fridge. I love it. Front and center. Out of sight, out of mind, as they say. Make it fridge-worthy 
clear, concise, easy to read, maybe some, I don't know, fun graphics make it less intimidating. Absolutely. Whatever it takes to make it something they'll actually use. Love it. Okay, we've covered so much ground today, from spotting those dodgy tradies to, you know, building that fortress of protection around our loved ones. But if there is one key takeaway, something you want everyone listening to really remember, what would it be? It's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. Protecting our elderly loved ones, it's ongoing conversations, it's building trust, it's empowering them with the knowledge to, you know, to navigate the world safely. Beautifully put. And, you know, on that note, if our listeners could do one thing today, based on everything we've talked about, what would it be? That one action step. Start the conversation, whether it's a parent, grandparent, neighbor, whoever, open that dialogue. Talk about these scams. You might be surprised. Maybe they know more than you think. Or, hey, maybe you just planted a seed that protects them down the road. Knowledge is power. And sometimes sharing that knowledge, that's the most powerful thing we can do. Thank you to everyone listening to this incredibly important deep dive. We know your time is valuable. We appreciate you spending it with us. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and let's all keep those A-teams on speed dial, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Until next time.